Hi, this is another episode of Astro Indicator Update. My name is Stephen, and again, we'll be taking some excursions into practical astrology. So what's today's content? As usual, we'll look at the Void of Course Moon calendar for this upcoming week. Um, there are some very short-term interesting things happening to in Donald Trump's astrology. And we'll look at some markets, the Dow Jones, gold, and actually at the last minute I added Bitcoin. And finally, we'll look at uh, Jeffrey Epstein's astrology chart. So, Void of Course Moon Calendar for this upcoming week. Uh, just for those people who've not listened to any of my other podcasts, what is the Void of Course Moon? The Void of Course Moon is the time period <clears throat> uh, that it takes for the moon to transition from one astrological sign to another. And this takes place every two and a half days, and sometimes it only lasts minutes. Uh, frequently, it lasts several hours, and every now and then it'll last you know, a whole day. Uh, why is this important? Well, from my own experience and from the tradition of astrology, there is a shift in mood, a shift in one's, in the general pop population psychology during a void of course moon period. And the key words that I use are there's a sense of disengagement, kind of a shifting into neutral, which doesn't s seem so bad and it's not particularly if you can take a day off when this is occurring or just engage in uh, things that are a little less important than, uh, than maybe your normal business routine in the middle of the week. Um, because the Void of Course Moon is really ideal for resting, playing, sort of regrouping, kicking back, uh, you know, going to the beach. Uh, it's not a good time to make big decisions, to spend a lot of money, or to start an important transition in your life. For example, getting married. So I wouldn't buy a house, I wouldn't buy a car, things of that nature dur during a Void of Course Moon. And whenever I can in my life, I try to reschedule, or I try to look ahead and try to reschedule events or business activities that, um, that I regard as important uh, to a time period where where it's not a VC void of course moon. So I'm going to get into this first line here in a minute. Let's finish the void of course moon. <clears throat> uh, we do have some kind of shorter term ones this week, tomorrow. Uh, actually, today is Sunday, August 11th. And uh, tomorrow on the 12th, we have a void, of course, beginning at 3.11 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So adjust if you're on the East Coast, that would be 6.11 p.m. That lasts all the way through until the next morning, uh, and it ends at 8.35 a.m. So this is a fairly long one. And uh, again, you have to convert the hours to different time zones. And so this would not end until 11.35 a.m. if you lived on the East Coast. And again, you know, you can always do sort of what I regard as secondary activities, maintenance work, things that have to get done in your business. Uh, but generally, try to avoid um, the more important things. And if you just have to you know, go to that very important meeting or whatever, just uh, attend to every detail that you can think of. In addition to the Void of Course, I've listed here today, August 11th, we've had, we have two planetary stations. Jupiter and Uranus are apparently, from the Earth standpoint, changing their direction. In reality, they're not, but just from the relative motions of the Earth and these two planets, they appear to be changing directions. And in astrology, when there is a station, and this is what it's called, the energy of those planets, um, they're amplified. And if you just, without going making this video too long, let's just say that there is definitely some, sort of a turning point taking place, particularly when you have two outer planets, oftentimes Jupiter is not considered an outer planet, but when you have two important planets 
having stations on the same day, there is a shift going on. And I can't guarantee what that will mean in your life or in the, you know, in the collectives uh, situation. But because I look at financial charts a lot, uh, there's definitely going to be a shift. And, and these stations do not, do not last just 24 hours. They last, you know, at least at the minimum, a couple days on either side of the station when you're dealing with the outer planets. So we're in a transition period right now. And um, it sort of remains to be seen. I mean, <laughs> funny thing for an astrologer to say, but it sort of remains to be seen what that means. Well, let's look at Trump's chart. And the, here again, if you've been watching the video, this is a by wheel. We have Trump, Trump's natal chart in the center, and we have um, his transits where the planets are located currently plotted, positioned relative to his natal chart in this outer ring. Okay, well, what's going on? Well, actually, over a few day period, he has Mars transiting his own Mars on his ascendant. So this is going to be taking place definitely Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And so, you know, what are the general meanings of Mars? I mean, uh, on the most kind of benign level, it's someone whose energy, just general energy, activity, uh, is, is, is increased. Uh, they have energy to burn, they can, um, you know, they just get more accomplished, you know, things that are positives. On the negative side, your ones, um, <clears throat> you know, um, anger management needs to come into play sometimes. Your, your people feel like they have a short fuse, they're impulsive, they can blow their top, you know. And so we'll see what happens in Trump's world, what, what's going on. But he may be, you know, the most the most positive thing would be he's he's really going to initiate something new, um, maybe politically or policy wise in the coming week. That would probably be the most positive outcome here. In addition to Mars conjunct Mars and his ascendant, he has this ongoing Pluto in conjunct Sun. So things are intense. I mean, this guy's intense anyway, but things just continue to be intense, kind of right on the edge of crisis a lot. Continuing, he has Mercury in conjunct the Ascendant. So here's Mercury right there, 29, 29. It's 30 degrees. It's an in conjunction, and in, con in conjunction is also 150. But this, you know, there could be a, an exceptionally large outbursting of, uh, of him uh, tweeting things in, in, on his Twitter account over the next few days. Jupiter is opposite Uranus. This is, has somewhat of a, um, you know, modifying effect, a little bit more, uh, you know, presenting himself in a more... Um, you know, uh, competent leadership role, uh, even though it may seem quite unorthodox. And that also is, has, is lasting over a period of time, not just this week, but over several months period of time. But I just wanted to point out this Mars, Mars thing, because something, you know, something's up. Not only do we have these transits happening today, this is a strong transit. Happens every two years in an individual's chart. It's particularly strong because Mars is so strong in Trump's chart. Let's move on. Dow Jones. We are at sort of a critical point here. Big drop this past week. I was seeing increasing volatility uh, in the astrology, which is represented by these vertical lines. The blue lines are more traditional support and resistance areas these blue lines here, the horizontal lines, the green lines are also traditional trend lines used in technical analysis. We've had a big drop. We blew through a very important trend line here, but bounced the last two days and got above it. That trend line needs to hold. This support line right here needs to hold. I'm using a proxy from the, um, you know, chart service that I use. It's DIA and ETF. 
Um, but you could see this in the Dow Jones Industrials, the, you know, the equivalent levels. These are important levels. So what do I see? Well, oddly enough, you know, from my research into this, we do have generally some bullish energy coming up that would support a bounce. We'll have to see because the bottom line with the astrology and how I apply astrology to the financial world is that my uh, my dates on, a mo on the most basic level represent high volatility market moving days and it's neither bullish or bearish you know at that most basic level uh, however you know if 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 the other context which looking down here we we got very oversold we're due for a bounce there could be other you know fundamental geopolitical factors entering in here but we're due for a bounce and i see you know the potential on balance is for a bounce to continue here gold time to consolidate well let's the astrology isn't quite as strong over the next 10 days and uh, here we have a market which is getting maybe a little bit overbought uh, oops I just hang on just a second I just goofed I don't know if I can come back here let me get here <laughs> sorry about that so um, back to gold we, we have a gap here see where this we've got a couple gaps here we've blown through a long term uh, trend line very positive very bullish you know which you know we have energy heading for the upside in fact I just read today 73 different currencies in the world relative to gold 73 countries have gold hitting all-time highs relative to their currencies so the momentum here is huge for gold and gold is a barometer of you know uh, you know people you know questioning the security of the financial markets my point here is that the astrology looks more like gold may consolidate to me it may trade sideways it may pull back and bounce off this green line at a certain point over the next week or so it's called a back test very common thing to happen and um, so I wouldn't be surprised if that takes place we've already had two gaps having additional gaps would be rare so you know the bottom line here is my better judgment tells me that gold may trade sideways that's my point okay Bitcoin I added this at the last moment because Bitcoin is kind of hitting a decision point area we have kind of an expanding channel with these green lines we went through it and and now you know from some chartists would say this is where we were forming a completely different channel this way which some might interpret as a flag hard to say I, I, I maintain trend lines from previous chart patterns and see how they interact and we're kind of trading into a corner here and we have that blue line is a support and resistance area which we just recently you know broke to the downside but we've got a number of support resistance areas uh, coalescing so to speak and in the astrology um, the, st the astrology looks like you know I think this date coming up on the actually tomorrow uh, Monday and August 17th which is Saturday are pretty important dates to tell us which direction Bitcoin may be going for a while we don't get much information from the momentum indicators down there because they're sort of in midway neutral zones so let's play off the the technicals here the astrology to me I was gonna say that it has an upside bias so enough of that okay I wasn't gonna do Jeffrey Epstein for a while because it just seemed like clickbait but this is you know what happened to him oh, uh, is, is I think very important because I think many people in the country are skeptical about the story and it's at least very suspicious 
Um, so I looked at his chart, and this is his chart. I don't have his ascendant, so the ascendant is probably inaccurate. So the chart was set up for around noon. He was a, an Aquarian. Um, let's see, where was his moon? Moon in Aries. He had Venus conjunct Mars. Okay. That in itself tells you, particularly with someone with a strong Aries, you know, this one had, you know, very large focus on sex and looking at women, you know, um, objectifying women in that regard. You know, it's, I know we know his story, and so it shows up in his astrology over and over again. But what don't we see? Well, this person. Um, also was somewhat prone to depression, somewhat prone to compulsive activity. Uh, right now, and when he died, if he did die, let me add, that's the story, that's the narrative, he has Pluto transiting Mercury. Here's Pluto, outer planets, Pluto, it's in retrograde, it is conjunct his Mercury. So things were really, he was in a lot of probably mental turmoil right now, sense of crisis. So, the, you know, if he did commit suicide, this would be an astrological signature that supports that um, event, let's say. He also had transiting Saturn conjunct his Chiron. So, again, a very dour mood, um, feeling very restricted, and, um, you know, that could have pushed him over the edge. I also got into looking, like last week, I looked at Tulsi Gabbard's declinations, which many astrologers do not use. And uh, let's move on to that. This is Epstein's declinations, because... Unless you look at the declinations, you wouldn't see that uh, he had a moon parallel Saturn. So look at his moon here. This middle row are the declinations, 8 degrees, come down to Saturn, 8 degrees. So this guy, you know, he, uh, he had a compulsive streak, you know, real sexual focus on, in his life. But also, just emotionally, he had, you know, a tendency to feel, um, uh, you know, to get into the dumps and feel very depressed. At least that would, that's often the propensity, and that's often the, you know, the potential when you have a moon Saturn arrangement. It doesn't apply to everybody. Other things can counterbalance that, most definitely. But uh, my guess is that this was true for him. And he, he had, uh, you know, just a kind of compulsive streak. In addition, he had sun parallel Vesta. Here's his sun, 20 degrees, come down to Vesta, an asteroid, 21 degrees. And this, you know, from my research, I, I have seen people with similar strong sun Vestas where, you know, they, they end up, they can be, end up, you know, being um, quite chaste and prudent and prudish maybe sexually and the energy that energy goes into work goes into maybe investments and so forth however there is an aspect of vesta that gets into sort of let's say alternative sexual lifestyles and this may both things i mean he claimed to be an investor but he had it parallel his son so his identity his you know sense of core self was into kind of an alternative lifestyle in that regard so that doesn't surprise me at all so the the, the bottom line here is that you know he the the storyline whether you know why he wasn't on 24-hour watch and why the video cameras weren't working at that at that time are all you know major questions that need to be addressed but whether he committed suicide or not, I mean, there are a lo lot of uh, indicators here that say that he, you know, he was in a state of crisis, you know, probably very depressed, and it's a you know distinct possibility that that part of the story is true. 
So anyway, I just wanted to kind of put my two cents out there. So that's it for today. My name is Stephen. I have a master's degree in psychology. I've been showing my artwork for many years, studying astrology for 40 years, applying it to financial markets for a number of years. And generally speaking, I am a sound money cryptocurrency advocate. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And I do accept Bitcoin donations. So uh, thanks again. I hope to have another video in about a week.